everyone, thanks for checking out our latest video. Today I'm going to show you how to paint cabinets. I'm going to be painting a linen cabinet, but these are the same steps that I took when painting our kitchen cabinets. It's been two years since I painted our kitchen cabinets and those are holding up perfectly. For our kitchen, I really like the results of this Bare Alkid semi-gloss enamel. I looked it up on their website. I'm not sure if they changed their formula or just the packaging, but now it's called urethane. Alkid semi-gloss enamel interior exterior paint and it goes for $38. But as I said earlier, we painted our cabinets uh, two years ago and the paints held up really nice. There's been um, no chips, yellowing, or scratches. Any food that has gotten on it, it's really easy to wipe off even if it was dried on. The only thing you might notice, which I was trying to get a good shot of here, is you might be able to see some of this original wood grain come through. I know that's a concern for some. Um, I think in most of the lighting that we do see our kitchen in, that it's not noticeable. And um, I like the way that it turned out, so it wasn't much of a bother for me. But for others, some may not like that the um, wood grain shows through. I really like the application process and the results of our kitchen cabinet project using the bare paint. However, the paint I'm using today is from Lowe's and it's called the Valspar Cabinet Enamel. I lucked out with this one and actually found it in their Oops Paint section for $9 and it's this light gray color and we were wanting to paint our um, linen cabinet gray anyway so this is a great color to go along with that. The structure on this cabinet is pretty good, but some paint will help brighten this windowless hallway and bring it up to date. This task might seem daunting, especially if you're doing an entire kitchen, but just take it one step at a time. For an easy reference, here's a quick list of the steps you'll be taking. Alright, so let's get started. You'll start by removing everything from your cabinets. Since you'll be removing the doors, you'll want to make sure you keep track of the doors, especially if you're working with a large space like a kitchen where you're going to have numerous matching uh, doors. So what I do is I just grab a piece of tape um, and mark this one one and then put on the inside cabinet one. So this is door one, cabinet one and same with the, the rest of the cabinets. Since I'm only working with three doors here and they're all different sizes, I won't need to do that, so I can skip that step. Next, we're gonna be removing all of the hardware. What I like to do is once I remove it, I set it on the shelf right inside so I don't lose it. And so it keeps track of where it originally was. One of the screws was stripped, so what my husband did was he grabbed a thick rubber band and then put our drill bit through here through the screw and then got it out. Little trick of the trade, I guess. Next, we're gonna go through and give the cabinets and the doors a really good deep clean. If you're doing uh, kitchen cabinets, I would definitely recommend using a really heavy duty uh, clean cleaner like TSP. This will remove caked on grease and all that dirt that's been built up for over the years. Um, the TSP is what I used in our kitchen cabinets. You'll also want to have a plastic or metal scraper so you can scrape off any um, dirt that is left behind as well. Whatever cleaning product you decide to use, just make sure it's one that won't leave behind a residue. I'm going to go ahead and go through with my TSP cleaner, which I've already mixed into this bottle here. For the TSP cleaner, what I'm going to do on my cabinet doors and also on the frames, I'm just going to spray this TSP cleaner pretty liberally on it, and then I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes before wiping it off. Now if you're working on kitchen cabinets, you might have to use a scraper like I mentioned earlier, and that would be in these areas right here along, um, along the edging, and you just want to go along like that, and you'll start to see the 
uh, gunk come up if it is a high traffic greasy area. Um, I had a lot come up in my kitchen, not so much on this cabinet, but um, mostly dust, but it's still good to make sure you give it a good clean. We're about ready to get started with our paint and primer, but before we do, we want to go through and sand down anywhere that we're going to be painting with a 200-220 grit sandpaper. This will give the paint a clean, porous surface to work with. You don't need to remove the existing stain, you just want to scuff up the surface a little bit, so that's why I'm going to use a 220 grit sandpaper. And after you have gone through and sanded everything down, make sure you go through with a damp paper towel and wipe everything off so your surface is dust free before adding any paint or primer. Next, we'll tape off any areas on the interior that you don't want the paint to go on. I just framed the inside of the boxes and then also the lips here where the shelving is. And then on the outside, I have it going up the entire wall. And same for the inside. The instructions on this specific Valspar paint doesn't say anything about using a primer. However, with my painting experience, a primer is definitely important. Like I mentioned earlier, for our kitchen cabinets, we use the same technique but with the bare paint and we've had no chipping, yellowing, or any problems. On the Lowe's website, I saw the reviews for this Valspar paint that said that the wood grain showed through or that it yellowed. I will make sure to do a follow-up review in a few months to give it enough time for some wear and tear so I can give uh, a good review on that and what my opinion on that is. Uh, but this is why a primer is very important. You'll need fewer coats of paint when you use a primer. I used one coat of primer and two coats of paint in our um, kitchen and I'm most likely going to do the same today. Uh, primer will just also help avoid those wood grains from showing through. Think of the paint primer like a makeup primer that you would use on your face. It helps the paint just like your makeup last longer and apply better. For this project, I'm going to be using the Bullseye 123 water-based primer. When you go to pick out your paint, just tell a worker what you're painting and ask them what primer they would recommend for that project. This was the primer that was suggested to me for our, um, for our kitchen cabinets. Since the paint I'm applying is a light gray, I didn't bother to have it tinted, but if you're painting your cabinets a darker color, have the store tint your primer. Follow the primer's application and dry time instructions before moving on to the paint.
While you're painting, if you notice any paint buildup around the edging area, just go through with a brush and smooth it down. As you're painting, you might get these little blobs going on there, so once again, um, just use your brush and go through those and just wipe them down. If you miss a few, don't worry because you'll go back through with sandpaper in between each coat, but it is better to just catch it now while the paint is wet and just smooth those lines down. With the first coat of paint, as it's drying, you can see some of the primer coming through. Uh, so it'll definitely need at least two, possibly a light third coat as well. Um, but yeah, you can just see that primer coming through, which is fine. We only have one coat of paint on so far, so a second one will definitely cover all of that up. But it's just going to be drying for a little bit now. Alright, I have my first coat of the paint down. The instructions say allow 8 to 12 hours before recoating, so I will just let this sit overnight and then reapply the second coat tomorrow and we'll see how it goes. Since I'll be reusing my brushes, what I will do is I will just take my roller off, put it in a Ziploc bag, and I will do the same with my brush, put it in the same Ziploc bag, and then just seal that airtight and leave them wet, they'll stay wet in there, and then I can just get to using them um, for my second um, coat tomorrow. If you prefer, you can rinse out your brushes or um, just use a plastic bag like this. All right, my first coat of paint is now dry, so what I normally would do is go through with a 220 grit sandpaper and go through and just sand down the surface so it's very smooth for the next coat to be applied. However, on this specific paint can, it doesn't say anything about sanding in between coats. And also, as I'm feeling the surface, it is very smooth and I'm only noticing a few bumps here and there, so not a whole lot. Um, but just to make sure I have a really clean surface, I'm just going to go through and um, sand down any of those fine bumps that I do see. And once you've sanded down everything that you want to, you'll go ahead and apply your second coat of the paint. So I went ahead and bought these painter tripods. That way I can work on both sides of the doors while um, the other side is drying. So what you do is, while you're painting uh, one side of the cabinet door, you'll have the tripods um, underneath. And then while the top is still wet, you'll flip it over and paint the other side. And that just helps with um, not having to wait for one side to dry before you get to the other side. Uh, with the primer, it wasn't much of an issue since that dried in like two hours, but this paint has been taking um, eight hours to dry, so I'll go ahead and use this so it'll cut down on some time. I got these at Lowe's, to 10 pack for $6. Um, Amazon, Walmart, um, Home Depot, they all have these too. As I'm painting, I have this kind of paint glob building up here, so I'm just going to take my brush and smooth that out. More paint kind of comes out there, so I just want to kind of get rid of some of that excess paint in there. 
the paintbrush will do the job with that. So now that this side is painted, I'm going to flip it over. I'm trying to touch as little of the paint as possible. And on the sides where I did touch, I can just go back with the roller. All right, my second coat of paint is all dry and everything is looking really good. I do notice a few spots where the paint kind of bubbled up and I didn't catch it while it was still wet. So I'm just gonna go through with my sandpaper, sand that over and then repaint it with um, just a really light coat of paint uh, and just touch up on a few spots that I do see some splotching. Um, I noticed on the corners, especially where the cabinet meets the wall, there was, um, some need for touch up there so I'm just gonna go back really lightly and do that with a brush and then I will be all finished. I really like the way that these um, paint pyramids or tripods worked out. I think that they are a great help for um, painting the cabinets. Uh, just a little tip, I started painting, um, I painted the back side of the cabinet first so then when that was still wet the back of the door was what was face down in case there was any any marks left behind from this then it would be on the inside of the door and not visible on the outside of the door. So just a little tip, start with the back while that's wet, have that side down and then finish with the front side of the cabinet. I'm almost uh, finished with this project but as a finishing touch there's one last thing I'd like to do. So with the, where the cabinet and the wall meet, you can see there's this um, kind of separation here. It doesn't meet up perfectly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and use my caulking. And I'm going to go in and just caulk um, all along the sides. So all just throughout the side of the cabinet. So then I'll have a really nice transition between the cabinet and the wall and I'll just give it the finishing touch that it needs. This top cabinet is the worst one. The separation between the cabinet and the wall is pretty pronounced here. So let's go ahead and put that caulking on now. All right, so I used my caulking and I went along this border here where the wall and the cabinet meet. And then I also went back over with my wall paint and painted the white marking there. Um, sometimes I like to leave a little bit of the white showing like I did down here. I did have a little bit of excess caulking on the wall that I needed to get rid of so I just went over with my brown wall paint and touched that up. So now it is seamless.